Mm-hmm. We got more, brother. There's way more than that. But this is plain and clear saying, he, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments are the words of the covenant. I now, never disagreed with that. You're to, saying the words uh, are the covenant. Right. Big difference. The terms and conditions of a contract. There's a distinction. Continue. Brother, do you know what the you know what the word covenant means? It's just the word that word covenant is just an agreement. Okay, it's let's contract. look up covenant right now. Let's look up covenant okay. right now. I mean, if you want to go back and forth and All actually right, have a, a civil discussion, we need to go back and forth. You can't rant. You can't go rant off with no, twenty no, different we, verses. We need to actually get to the answers of your statements that you're claiming. Hey, brother, brother, I'm showing you Hold on, D. Real quick, because uh, I gotta open up these mics. We hear you though, but uh, grab that uh, that covenant, uh, Marcus A to D, and it's gonna be Barith, and you're gonna look it up, and it's, and, and that's the actual parting pieces to ratify the covenant. It is it's, it's, it's so much a part of the covenant. You can't like brother the brother Marcus said. The next thing after the covenant is a, is is basically the law. In other words, when we look at it, he's establishing a covenant by blood. So the whole the, the covenant is contained in ordinances. That's what it says in the book of Hebrews. It says it's contained, the covenant is contained in ordinances. So you, you ain't gonna get past that. There's no distinguishment there. But let me open up these mics because we got brothers in here that want to get in this as well. Um uh, let me say my, my, my Facebook my Facebook family need a call. Y'all need to call in and get on in on this mess. All right, this is Deuteronomy chapter four, verse thirteen. It says, And he declared unto you his covenant which he commanded you to perform even 10 commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. So the covenant is something you perform. That's the 10 commandments. That was the basis of the covenant right there. So you can't separate it. You can't say the law of Moses is not the old covenant. It, 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 it's, it's like the heart, the centerpiece of the old covenant. It starts with, with the terms and conditions. If you do this, then I will do this. So, I mean, that's that's all I got to say. Um, we can, I guess, go on to Right. It. Let me grab this mic real yeah. quick. Let me grab the mic. And, uh, A13, peace. Your mic is open, brother. Peace, peace, peace. What's going on, brothers? This is uh, Faith of the God. I'm just listening in. And, you know, I just want to chime in a little bit, if y'all don't mind. Um, What's going on, peace? You, brother? I see a lot of error from... Peace, peace, peace. What's going on, brother? Yeah, I see a lot of error uh, coming from devoted to Yah. Um, sure, it seems of like course. he's not quite understanding uh, the scriptures. Of you know, course. It seems to be, you know, kind of misrepresenting what you guys are saying a little bit. And, sure. you know, I guess I wanted to ask him a question, maybe to, uh, you know, maybe to get some uh, clarity because, I mean, I, I, okay, so for example, he just used an example about a lease on an apartment. Um, I guess I wanted to ask uh, devoted to Yah. Um, can I go to a apartment complex with an old lease with different rules and say I want an apartment here? Would the place honor that? Would they say, Oh yes, yes, go right ahead, sir. Here, let's go ahead and sign you up on the old lease that uh, expired in two thousand and thirteen. Absolutely not. Right. So you would then have to agree, if we read the Bible from beginning to end, that God made distinct covenants with different people. For example, we know that the covenant that was made with Noah was not the same covenant that was made with Abraham. We know that the covenant that was made with Abraham was not the same covenant that was made with Moses. And the rules and regulations of said covenants were distinct. They were different. For example, Noah didn't have the mandate of circumcision. Abraham did. Abraham and Noah did not have the mandate of the dietary law. But Moses did. Now, why would you think in this new covenant that the rules of the old covenant in full would be applicable if even in Jeremiah 31, it tells you 
that this covenant would not be like the one made with the fathers of old in Egypt. Can I answer? Go ahead, sir. You got it. Sure. Okay. I see how easily we got so distracted from Matthew chapter 23 to 28 because I said one thing, but I'm going to bring it back there because this is what you guys are missing. After the resurrection of Messiah, Matthew chapter 28, he said to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I previously commanded you in the past before my death and resurrection. That includes Matthew chapter 23, verse 3, which says, hold on, be patient, guys. I understand you struggle with this. Verse 3 says, do and observe all that they tell you to do. I, I heard somebody talking and you're talking right now. I mean, it's mad disrespectful. I don't do it. Verse, verse 3 of Matthew 23 says, do and observe all that they tell you to do. What they were teaching was the law of Moses. So the terms and conditions were transferred over to a new contract. It is not an old terms and conditions and an old expired contract. It is, yes, it's an, ex, well, I'll play with you guys. Let's say that the new covenant is in effect right now. Yes, the old contract is expired. However, the terms and conditions are transferred over. That's all. Okay, can I just stop you for a moment? All right, can I just stop you for a moment? Because you just exposed yourself to that. If we look at Matthew chapter 5, it says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law, right? That's 17. I have not come to destroy the law, but fulfill. For verily I tell you, till heaven and earth pass, which is the one that y'all love to use, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. So now I have two questions. Please. Number one. Yes. Is the law of circumcision a jot in a tittle, and has that passed in the way that it was defined in the old covenant, which was physical circumcision? And number two, were the animal sacrifices a jot in a tittle, and was that also the way that sin was atoned for in the old covenant, the law of Moses? Can I answer? Mm. You guys are not going to like this, Go and ahead, I'm 100%, 110% ready for any of your rebuttals because I know you're going to go to Paul. The answer to circumcision, it transferred over, bro, guys. Bro, it transferred, it transferred bro, over. Bro, bro, bro. It transferred over. It is still a commandment. Number two, the sacrifices and offerings transferred over. It is, there is still an earthly Levitical priesthood until heaven and earth passes away. The temple will be rebuilt and you will be commanded to obey those commandments. You're not going to like it, but now we can go to Paul or whatever you want to go to. Hold on, hold on, hold on. When you look in Hebrew, yep. no, 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 no. Because yeah. he, let's go. Galatians, so, no, no, Hebrews, Galatians. Wait. Let's go. I'm ready. Faithful. Wait. I'm ready. Faithful, faithful. Wait, wait, wait. Bro, Real I was in Hebrew roots person for five years. You're not, you're not, you're not going to get faithful. one over on me. Faithful. I know the law better faithful. than you know the law. I'm sorry you had a faithful. bad experience. Faithful. Hold on, real quick. Hold, wait, 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 y'all. Hold on. Now, <laughs> be patient. Leviticus 18 and 4. I'm not going to go to Paul. I'm going to go straight to the Torah. I play no game with this. It says, mm. it's 18. <laughs> let's see if you're doing this. Ain't no getting away. Ain't no escape. It's inevitable. We ain't going to let you do it. Leviticus 18 and 4. Ye shall do my judgments. Matter of fact, let me jump up a little bit. Neither, let's jump up to, well, we can stay right there. You should do my judgment, something that this brother not going to talk about, because you ain't doing that. That's your jot and your tittle right there. You should do, you should keep my ordinances. They ain't doing that. To walk therein, I am the Lord your God. You should therefore keep my statutes in my judgment. Oh, he said judgments again. That just hurt me. Which if a man do... He shall live in them. I am the Lord. Now, number one, which one of y'all is doing his judgments? Which one of y'all got a government to go stone anybody? That's your job and your tittle. Tell me you finna go stone somebody right now, and you ain't got a government to do that. And you ain't doing his judgments according to what was governorized, was given to them to governorize their land. If you're not doing that, you're not keeping no job or no tittle. I mean, you're not keeping the law. 
And if you change that, and you change what the brother just said about the sacrifices, you're not keeping none of those things. I can show you that there's two covenants here. And in those two covenants, I can show you how they contrast each other. Which can I, one can I answer? Come on, what stranger should come from their priest? Can I answer? So explain that, brother. You got some explaining to do. Keep them judged. Okay. Uh, please don't distract me. Uh, please don't. Please don't interrupt me. Please don't interrupt me while I'm trying to answer the question that was directed towards me. Right, right, right. But before before you say anything, hold on. Before you say anything, after you're done, I'm gonna ask you something, and I hope that you will answer me because I was about to address your misunderstanding of animal sacrifices. Now go right ahead. You guys. Man, there's no need to do all that, man. All you got to do is be patient and wait your turn, man. Just come on, man. People are listening. I'm a, I'm very direct. I like to go back and forth and be quick and simple, man. I don't like all this running around. Here's the answer to your question, guys. This is wisdom, okay? You're not going to like it, but it's wisdom. Is it wrong to commit adultery under the law of Moses? Yes. The answer is obviously yes. Is the Is the consequence the death penalty? The answer is obviously yes. Did David commit adultery? The answer is yes. Was David stoned to death? The answer is no. Did David commit murder by sending Uriah, the husband of the woman he actually slept with, into battle and purposely told the military to send him into the middle of the battle and back off so he can die? What's the consequences for murder? Life for life. Did David, did David die? Did he get the death penalty? No. I'm going to expose your, your fallacy with one more example. Daniel. Daniel. Under Nebuchadnezzar, wait, the Babylonian right king. Stop. Hold on. Stop right there. Okay, I'll stop. Hold on, brother. Hold on. I'll stop. Stop. David. David shed innocent blood. Yep. A life for a life. That's the law. Leviticus 16. Somebody died. Who died when David did that? He didn't get stoned, though. That's besides the point. We're no, talking about Torah. We're talking about you guys are t you guys are wait, you guys wait, are talking wait, about wait, literally. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, now now wait, you wait, brother, brother, you don't want brother, me to brother, brother, wait, go ahead. Wait, who died when he wait, did what he did? Bro, bro, stop getting emotional, man. Come on, man. We're men here. All right, who died, brother? Firstborn. David's right, firstborn. Does the law still stand a life for a life? Yes, but not for stoning. Does it stand? Okay, well, let me ask you a question. Whatever you do, I don't care what you think it is, the whole law, the whole New Testament, Old Testament, the whole book, whatever you do, if you sin and you don't follow his instructions, Innocent blood is always shed behind your actions. That's life for life. So because Israel don't have natural atonement right now, and they don't have a tabernacle, guess who's going to pay for that? Them and their children. Going to smear, smear earth with their blood because it's a life for life. That's law. Okay. So you better have some type of grace, which is Christ. Okay, so you guys. Ahead, brother. Okay. My next point, my next point to expose that lie. My next point to expose that lie. Come on, y'all can't tag team me, bro. Be fair, man. Get your turn later. Or, or the host, stop, stop, stop cutting off because, um, this guy wanted to talk to me. So stop answering. Let him talk next. Come on, man. Be fair. Be fair. Daniel, the book of Daniel. They were under uh, Babylonian captivity. Nebuchadnezzar was the king. There was no temple. There were no priests for him to run to. Was Daniel a righteous man? Did Daniel have access to the throne of heaven? Were his prayers heard? Was he filled with the spirit? Yes, yes, and yes. Therefore, it is not... You guys don't understand the, the, the concept of mercy, grace, and the exceptions of the exceptions. If there's no temple, there's no sacrifices to be done. If there's no government, there's no stoning to be done. It, the same concept exists right now. And that's why I stand, I stand righteous and I do stand and I believe that I am following, I am following the law of Moses perfectly. Just like Daniel was. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. And I'm going to show that right now. Let me, let me go to that right now. No, no, watch this. 
What is this? First of all, let's go to Hebrews chapter 7 because you said something and you cut yourself and you don't realize it. Let me show you why your private interpretation of Scripture is not lining up. Let me show you why it is a private interpretation. Let me show you. Let's start at verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Hold on, Hebrews so chapter. What chapter? What chapter? Hold on, I missed your chapter. What chapter? Evident. What chapter? Hebrews chapter 7. I'm, I'm telling you, Hebrews chapter 7, starting at verse, uh, what was that? Verse 14. Okay. Got All it. right, here we go. Now I'm at 15. And it is, and it is yet far more evident for it after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandments, but after the power of endless life. Okay. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made mm -hmm. nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. And this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made of surety a better testament. For they truly were made priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Now, I'm going to stop there because I want to show you something else. This is very important. I'm going to show you 27. I'm going to skip down. Because this is talking about the priests who have infirmities and etc., etc., and we know Christ is perfect. Now look what it says. 27. Who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people, for this he did once when he offered up himself. All right? Now, if you look at Hebrews chapter 10, it'll tell you that his sacrifice was once and for all. So if you believe that the sacrifices spoken about in Ezekiel are applicable in the sense that people are going to be doing them to atone for sin, then you are negating your own Messiah, and you are basically saying that you are going to atone for your sin when only he can atone for your sin. And you don't realize that. Because you're look. Oh, man, he dropped off. Mm. That was Yahuwah. Man. That was Yahuwah <laughs> shutting him up. Can I answer to that? Nah, you can't. Nah, man, don't say that. Don't say that, brother. <laughs> that, could, that could be blasphemy, man. Don't, don't say that. Yeah, that, not for me, go bud. Go I'm ahead, not afraid ahead, of none of this Christianity. Ahead, Listen, go man. Ahead, brother. Go ahead. You respond here, to that. Go, go ahead. Here, go ahead here, you here's respond. the problem when you don't read in context. Here's the problem when you read just the New Testament. Read the next chapter, Hebrews chapter 8, because it flows. It's all flowing. Yes, we have a better priest. He's our high priest, and he did what the animals could not do. Back now. Hebrews chapter 8. Yeah, if I'm you continue up. reading. Yeah. Hold on real quick. Paul. I don't want to cut you, brother. We got him back, so you got to finish your thought. Right. Okay, oh, but I just wanted to say, and, uh, right, right, yeah, yeah, you know, my uh, connection cut. So real quick, and I heard everything he just said now. Here's the problem. I know the Old Testament. I know the whole Bible. The thing is that I was a Hebrew roots person for five years, so I know all your little arguments, because I used to use them. But the difference is that I was blind. I was blind because I could not see the scriptures. I wasn't being led by the spirit. I was being led by the flesh, just as you're being led by the flesh, because you don't have the spirit now. If you had the spirit, you would understand these things, because the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he understand them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Everything in the scriptures has to be understood by the Spirit in this covenant. Now, all I was going to say is if you're making this you're appeal done? to Ezekiel, which I know this argument, and you're saying, well, the, the temple is going to be rebuilt. Do you realize that when Christ spoke of the temple, 
in this covenant right now. At, now, I'm not talking about future in the millennial kingdom. Man, this right is now, really not fair, man. You just go thing. on and on and on, man. We should go one okay. point at a Roll time, on, man. Listen, listen, You're listen. trying to persuade the audience, man. Have the fruit of the spirit, brother. Have the fruit of the spirit in mind. Practice patience. You need this to practice listening, practice being quick to you listen and slow to speak. You're fast oh, to speak. Wait, 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 bro, wait, 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 bro, wait, wait, bro, 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 get out of, get out of, get out of the flesh, bro. You're in the flesh. You're not my brother, get man. You're not my brother. You're a viper. Don't call me, bro. You I brought up Hebrews chapter seven, and I want to address wait, Hebrews wait, chapter wait, seven. Wait, wait, I, I will, I will, I will, I will. Listen to me. I don't consider you a brother, so I have no problem not calling you a brother. Okay, then don't so call me brother no more. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, family, hold on. Wait for a minute. Let's not do it. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, Google's a heretic. Okay, so go ahead, brother. Uh, brother D. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Faith. Let this brother go on and go because it's going somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we got other callers we got to ask them just as well. Okay. Go Hebrews ahead, chapter seven. If you continue to read that chapter, you have to continue reading to the next chapter because it continues on the theme of the priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood. Hebrews chapter 8. Now of the things which we have spoken, in other words, he says, this is the sum. He's about to sum it up for you. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, not on earth. I got to be a little lower. I live in an apartment complex. I got to calm down. Verse 2. A minister, a minister of the... All right, man, calm down. Don't get excited. Calm down. Calm down. I never interrupted you when you know, went through Hebrews 7. I know. We're, we're, we're men. I know. No, no, no. But we're men here. Act like a man. Be a I, man. Nah, he got it, brother. I, I, I am a man, bro. I'm more of a man than you are. What you talking about, man? No, you're not. You're acting like a female right now. Uh, yeah, man. sure. Sure I am. Go ahead, brother D. You yeah, okay. It. That's why you can't control your mouth, Get out that estrogen, man. Yeah. You're on right, PMS. Get that estrogen out of your system. Right, yeah, on, you're on baby. PMS, bro. You're right, like a woman. On, Calm right. down. You sound like a female. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, sure. That's why you keep interrupting me. Come on, brother. That's why you keep interrupting me while I'm talking. It's that wicked spirit in you. Verse 2. This is Hebrews chapter 8 for the audience. Again, Hebrews chapter 8. I'm going to verse 2. Okay? Because the devil's trying to distract you from reading this. Verse 2. A minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which is, which Yahuwah and not man pitched. Verse 3, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is necessary that this man somewhat also has something to offer. Verse 4, 4, this is important. Verse 4 is going to be a hard thing to swallow. You have to totally ignore this unless you want the truth. Verse 4, for if he were on earth, who's the he? We're obviously talking about the Messiah. We've been talking about him the whole time. For if he were on earth, hypothetically, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. And I'm not going to go all over scripture to other scriptures like you do. I'm going to end it right there and I'll wait my turn to go to more scriptures to confirm how the Levitical priesthood is not done away with. Until heaven and earth passes away. Well, hold on, brother. Hold on. You just, no, no, hold on. No, 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 no. Let, me, let me address that, though. Let me, let me go ahead and address that because then I'm going to... This guy completely cut himself. First of all, what he read doesn't negate anything that I read in the previous chapter. See, before I say anything else, I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to read in Hebrews 8, and then I'm going to go to Hebrews 9, and we're going to go to Hebrews 10 since he likes to talk about content. Here's the funny thing. He basically, without him realizing it, is basically saying, I'm going to pit scripture against scripture. You read that verse? Well, I'm going to read another verse, and now this is completely going to destroy what you read before. But he doesn't realize that's not how one deals with hermeneutics. We reconcile the text. We don't pit verses against verses. Oh, you get this verse? I'm going to grab this verse, and now I'm going to make imaginary contradictions. Now, let's actually go back to 7 before I go ahead and read 8. This is ridiculous, man. This is the one that he ignored. This is 18. For there is barely a disannulling of the commandments going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw an eye unto God. Now, we know that in the Old Covenant, 
in the Psalms, it says the law is perfect. But why does it say here that the law made nothing perfect, if the law is perfect? Because the law pointed to Christ. Christ is the truth. The law is truth because it spoke of Christ. Now, knowing that and reading this, what we just read right there, we realize that because the law spoke of Christ and because Christ is perfect and he is the perfect mediator, when you look at chapter 8 and you look at what it says about the priesthood in heaven, obviously you're missing the part. When the new covenant, it says it is not the Jerusalem on earth that is counted as, um, that is equivalent to uh, Sarah. Rather, she is looked, the, the one on earth is looked at as the slave woman, as Hagar. But it was the Jerusalem from above that is counted as the mother of us all. So when Christ is the priest in heaven, he also said he was given authority on heaven and earth. But that does not negate the fact that the animal sacrifice is fulfilled in the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to argue and say, well, the new temple, the new temple, when that temple is built, here's the problem. Even if we were to grant you that and say the temple is going to be a, a physical temple, we're going to have physical sacrifices, it would not be for atonement of sin. Because if Christ is the atonement of sin, the animal sacrifices could not logically be the atonement of sin because if that's the case then christ died in vain because that's exactly what paul says in galatians 2. if righteousness comes by the law christ died in vain and you are basically without realizing it arguing that righteousness does come by the law and christ did die in vain because now we still have to do the animal sacrifices in the future that means his that's the law, tactic that's the that tactic law is still to go on and on and on the fact that a jot and a tittle has passed from the law. You still haven't even answered circumcision, by the way. You haven't even gone into that. But um, if you want, now do you guys mind? Because I don't know. He says I don't read things in context. Y'all mind if I just go ahead and keep reading? Oh my you know, goodness, I, man! I, I, you I, I got to like, be kidding me, bro! Wait, hold on, wait, hold on, you got to be kidding me, man! Hold on, you are tripping, bro! No, 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 no! I'm not. Hold on, hold on! Listen to me! Listen to me! Open up these mics. Listen, we got 23 minutes. Well, one, on one, last thing, one, one, one last thing, though, uh, uh, Laron, Brother Laron. I'm going to read something very quickly because this is in the same chapter, which, uh, which I find ironic. Because you didn't read he, verse he, 12. He, you need to read verse 12. That's the verse that's you all need about, to read. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, yeah, right, that's exactly what I was going to go. But I was also going to read this one. I was going to read, but now he has attained a more excellent ministry. This is sick. By how much, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. And I will read the, the, the 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will I remember no more. Now, again, again, I can read 9 12. and I can read 10. I, I did read 12. I just read it. It says for the no, verse, verse 13. Hebrews 7 and 12. Oh, you said 7 and 12. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll go ahead and read that. Yeah. Go ahead. You can read it. And then we're going to go on to yeah, the next call. A, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. So I'm going to end it with this. Because I don't want him to think I'm just going on and on. Because he, he wants me to read things in context. He complains that I don't read, I guess, in context. And then when I do, then he complains. So let, let me not uh, bring strife and, and, and cause it, him to, to be confounded any more than he already is. So the vote of the God, and I, and I will yield and I'll let you answer as long as you want. How do you get around the fact that it's telling you there's a change in the law, that this covenant is built on better promises? And if you tie it in with Jeremiah 31, unlike the ones made with the fathers in Egypt. Go right ahead. Okay. I mean, I... This is just... This is not good to have this kind of dialogue when people are going from Scripture to Scripture to Scripture. I want you guys, the audience... I'm going to talk to you right now. I want the audience to see the hypocrisy 
and how they're asking me a question. <laughs> yeah, there goes the laugh. I mean, that's what happens. Um, uh, you know they what I'm ask, talking about, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Go ahead, brother. Okay, they asked me. They asked me I'm before. Wrong. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, listen, they asked me before. I need to keep, do I keep the law perfectly? Because I need to keep it perfectly. You know, every single commandment, I need to stone people and do all that. I exposed their lie about it and said, no, I don't need to stone people. Daniel didn't stone anyone. David wasn't stoned. Okay. You see how I'm getting on the fact that it doesn't, you don't have to specifically follow the law specifically, perfectly the way it is every single time. Yahuwah shows mercy to whom he wants to show mercy. He gives people a longer time than others to get a consequence to their sin. It, you got to understand the way Yahuwah works, okay? It's not cutthroat every single time. One guy, just for picking up sticks on a Sabbath, he was killed. That didn't happen with most of the Israelites who defiled the Sabbath. Hundreds and hundreds of years all throughout the Old Testament. But now, all of a sudden, we're in Hebrews chapter 7, and we're in Hebrews chapter 8. And because I'm not going specifically in detail to everything once again... He's seen that there's a change in the in the law and a change in the priesthood. All of a sudden now I I can't be specific. Now all of a sudden he's allowed to have a little room for change. And listen, I never said that the priesthood of Yahusha is not better. I believe it. He is better. He's in the true tabernacle, which is in heaven. He is the true high priest, which is in heaven. Everything on earth is a shadow of the things that are in heaven. Colossians chapter 2 explains all of this perfectly Colossians chapter 2 we discussed this a little bit today tonight but I'm going to go there again to bring it all back together let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or new moons or sabbaths which are a shadow of things to come not a shadow of things that came the earthly the earthly priesthood points to the heavenly priesthood, which is Melchizedek. And as I read in Hebrews chapter 8, so, oh, no, hold on. As I read in Hebrews chapter 8, he blatantly sorry, ignored okay. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 4. He ignores it and takes everything in Hebrews chapter 7 to override what's in verse 4, rather than taking both and harmonizing them together. So that's what I, that, that's what I did as a Christian. When I came with all these conflicting, you know, conflicting things with Paul's writings in the Old Testament, I didn't go and say, oh, I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm take Paul's letters over it or oh, anything that has to do with the law. I'm going to, you know, it's going to be belittled and I'm going to take Paul. No, you have to. If you really believe in this Bible, you will fight tooth and nail to try your best to harmonize what seems to be a contradiction. And here's my harmony with this. The Levitical priesthood in the in the in a thousand year reign. They will be offering sacrifices. That's in the scriptures. I don't have to go to them. Isaiah 66, for goodness sake. Okay? They are going to be doing these things. I never said that they were going to be to atone for sin. That is a legitimate upgrade or change. Okay? So for the record, I never right, said me, uh, that the sacrifices and offerings are going to be for atonement for sin. That would be completely ridiculous because then that means that the substance is not stronger than the shadow. And I never said that, and neither is that a okay, so let, let me hold on, hold on. No, 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 you know, once we go into the overtime portion, you will not be able to listen to this live at all. You're going to have to, you can go back and listen to the archive, but if you want to get in to listen to this live dialogue, we're about to open up these other mics with these other brothers. You want to definitely... You see how they're fighting over each other now, right? That's what happens when a man with wisdom answers, gets them all, they don't know what to do with themselves. I was ready for that. To the uh, next caller. Um, just, I mean, just real quick, I mean... I mean, the case, you know what I'm saying, with Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, I think uh, Brother Faithful did an excellent job expressing that. You know, uh, it says a jot or a tittle, uh, Brother D, and the law of animal sacrifice is definitely a jot and a tittle. And 
you know, you can't sit up here and say that we got to offer up animal sacrifice today. I mean, that's just, you know, we know that that's not scriptural. I never said that. We don't have to do those things today. By default, a jot or a tittle has passed from the law. So, and we do know that everything was fulfilled. All things were fulfilled, as Luke 24, 44 states. So then he, the heaven and earth passed away then too, huh? So how these things were fulfilled, brother. So, um, I mean, it's plain and clear. Uh, it was even brought out in Hebrews 7 and uh, 12 that there was a change of the law. So you can't sit up here and say everything is still in full effect. You can't do that when the scripture is plainly telling you there's a change in the law. It, come on, brother. Now, now Marcus. Brother Marcus, because there's yeah. something, there was something else that I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna completely forget this. He brought it out. Okay, he says that the the sacrifices that are going to take place, it, when it talks about in Ezekiel, right? When it talks about the animal sacrifices and the temple and all those different things, he admitted that those are not for the atonement of sin. Therefore, the animal sacrifices that were atonement for sin, Yom Kippur, those animal sacrifice, that animal sacrifice, you know, the scapegoat. If those, if that is done away with, because Christ, in his fulfillment of the law, mm-hmm. took the place of that sacrifice, then it must logically follow that you cannot make animal sacrifices right now. For the atonement of sin, because the atonement, which is Christ, is the only atonement that will cover your sins in this covenant. So you have to either so so. I will end it with this, and I'll, I'll give the money. You have to look at Matthew five, and you only get three choices. The first choice is none of the law. Uh, well, actually, no. Excuse me. Exactly. We got way away from the Sabbath, focused on the on the offerings and sacrifices and priesthood to justify not keeping the Sabbath. Very slick. And we as Christians are right when we say that a jot and a tittle has passed, which would be animal sacrifices, circumcision, and a whole other bunch of things. Or number three, some things have been fulfilled, and Matthew five eighteen has made a false statement. Now you get those three choices. And actually, number two should be number one, but you basically get those three. Either you believe that 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 the law has been fulfilled, and we are not under the law of works, but under the law of faith per Romans 3, 27, 28, or you believe that nothing has been fulfilled, and we're under all the law, which means you still have to do the animal sacrifices, or number three, some things have been fulfilled, and Lord forbid, you believe Christ made a false statement. Right. Exactly. So, so I mean, that's clear. I'm getting that's tag team though now. You know, it's uh, tag team, man. Uh, I see how oh, no, it is. No, no, no. I'm finna jump. I'm finna jump to... I'm finna, brother, you got, a, you got an audience of almost 19 people over there on your, on your... They can call in. Why they ain't called in? They can call in. Okay, they, y'all see the brother over here? Yeah, hey, we finna open up these mics. Y'all call in, press the number one to help this brother out. I'm hearing three brothers talking okay, right now that are not audience. That are not audience that called in. All right. All right. Well, hold on, brother. No, I'm saying you have, you have an audience over there of 19 people, I believe, on your channel on Facebook. Yeah, but they're not we calling in. Right now. One guy right. called in for you guys, and then three right. of you guys are now giving commentary and not letting me get in. That's not fair. Right, well, hold on, brother. I'm going to open up these mics because we let you get it in, but you just ain't really coming up with no strong answers on according to the law. And I'm, That's I'm a lie. A favor, That's brother. a lie. I don't even got to go to the New Testament. That's a hold lie. Hold on, brother. Listen, I don't even have to go to the New Testament. I could just stay in the Old Testament with you in the first five books and just smash just in the first five. But, you know, uh, sure. uh, let me open up these mics, brother, because uh, you also remember you said the Sabbath was also a shadow of things to come. So I want to know what that shadow was, you know, but we're going to move to the next call. Mm, right. 702. Your mic is on.